Okay, I am on another job, another shower build that will be very interesting. I like things that are a little different. This is going to be different. Um, this is pretty standard in Georgia, uh, garden tub. Mm, I don't think many people use them. I know I had one in my house and we never used it. So we're going to delete the garden tub and make that one big shower. But we have the shower over here, so they want to facilitate about half of this about two thirds of it to make closet space going back that deep three foot, whatever it is, um, which is a good idea. You know, all your towels and all that stuff. Um, we're going to go out 72 inches, 70, I think it's 72 because we have 12 by 24 tile and the math works out that if we start on that end, we can get full tile, even though it's going to be staggered full and half full and half, there won't be any type of sliver cuts or anything which is really cool that I can actually predict where this wall will go because this wall is getting deleted as well. That's going down and then I'll build a new wall at 72, somewhere around 71 inches probably. Um, so we can get full tile in there, which is, you know, a good idea. This is going to be, um, the plumbing is going to be a slight bit complicated. The valve is right there. So I have my fixtures and all that stuff. So I just transfer, cut that stuff out and transfer the line over here for my valve. But they eventually want a slider bar over here. Um, so two ways to go about that. We're gonna use the Delta R22000, which already has the diverter. And it's a three function diverter. So there are three different features you can have. And we kind of did a rough drawing on how we're gonna make that work. Um, not really sure exactly yet, but the best of my knowledge will be a shower head off of one of those ports. The other port will be um, a slider. I think a slider. Yeah, a slider is going to go here. So shower head, slider, and then the third port will normally go through the wall, but there's a lot of studs and all that stuff, and there's an attic upstairs. So I'm going to run the third port up into the attic and over and down in order to have the slider over here. Um, a shower head. Yeah, there's going to be a shower head and a slider. So normally you would do two valves, um, but with R22000, there's not really a point in doing two valves if I can figure out the um, intricacies of getting that done. Because, um, you know, we got hot and cold mixer over here, so it's just the one pipe that I need that's already mixed to go up there. But then the diverter portion becomes the issue. Um, is that going to be a shower head? I don't know. We talked about so many things. Sometimes when you go over, you know, 15 different options and then they finally pick one, you're like, which one did we pick? Anyway, that being said, this will be one ginormous six foot shower, six foot long shower, um, ish by about a little better than three foot wide. So good size shower. Nobody has ever said when they're buying a house, wow, I'd really buy this house if the shower wasn't so big. It just doesn't happen that way. Um, there's another closet over here. We're not doing nothing with that. That's utility closet, cleaning supplies and stuff like that. So that's gonna stay in place. Um, we can't get center with a niche. They don't want the niche over here, which I don't know why, because I would do one there. Um, center of both of those features, but um, there's gonna be enough room to put an elongated niche. So I think we're doing one on that back and I'm gonna have to cut out some of the two by fours to make that happen. And that's basically it. This is day one. This will be the tile. It's a good quality um, rectified tile. And the way you know that, usually as a rule, see how these edges are very, very definitive square as opposed to a little rounded edge or a little tapered edge. That's how you know you have a rectified tile. Um, this tile has a pattern on it, which is problematic sometimes because you're trying to match up these kind of veins or this pattern because it's not really a marble type of tile, but sort of kind of is. And there's the arrow. 
a lot of good quality tile are gonna have an arrow. It's kind of a cheat sheet. It doesn't always get you, you know, the veins matching up because if you just follow the arrow with all your tile, then you're pretty good to go. But that's never definitive. So you always wanna kind of match up the best you can. Um, we're gonna do Schluter on the outside. Schluter trim, and it's gonna be this color. Yeah, so it's gonna be that color, um, both on the left and the right side. The niche, I think he's undecided about, but I think we're gonna schluter that also. There's gonna be a feature, glass feature, which I did on my last shower build that I did on my channel. So there's gonna be either four or five of these, probably five, my best guess, going from top to bottom. And so that will be also be brick pattern, and it's gonna be on this side as well brick pattern and it's going to encompass the shower valve same as i did on the last one i did like that um, we're contemplating this is a thick glass and so is the tile but these tile individually sometimes it's problematic to get them all flush and all that stuff with the adjoining field tile so we're contemplating putting like a either a rope or a pencil um, along the side of here because i do have some ceramic ropes out there that look nice People don't use them much anymore. Um, but that's what that would be basically. You know, maybe a, a skinnier version of that. And then we have floor tile. So this will be the river rock, shaved rock if you will, because it's not really river rock, but it's a shaved rock that will go on the floor. It will also go on the back of the niche. And one of the things that I look for is the back, right? When I see the backing and I see that it's glued very well, and it has a good backing, I'm very happy about that. If it kind of stands up on its own with a slight bend or whatever, um, that's a good quality tile, good quality mosaic. If it just kind of falls and crumbles and does all that number, except worse, yeah, take that back and get something better. So this is a good quality tile that I can work with easily. Um, it will look very sharp on the floor and the back of the niche. Um, the glass will be a nice accent and um, it will look awesome everything's going to the ceiling oh by the way I'm taking out this ceiling but I'm only going up this far um, I think that part's gonna go to yeah that part's gonna go so if you imagine a line going across um, because I don't do ceilings as I did I parted out that job in my other video that I have so I don't want to take on the entirety of that but I did sign up to take out that ceiling put in some more you know like new sheet rock so that's about it not doing anything to the floor this is a vct i think material um looks like it was recently installed and it goes throughout the entire bedroom so i'm not touching that um, i will cut back on some of that because the shower is going to line up with these two walls of course i said i'm moving that wall um, so yeah, it's um, it's gonna be awesome. It it's gonna take probably about the same time that my other bathroom took. Although the bathroom proper, I was doing some of the floor. Well, I did all the floor. I did the sheetrock on the outside of the bathroom and all that stuff. But um, now I'm just focusing on the shower. So it's gonna take 14 days, 14 working days anyway. Um, well, more or less about 10 to 12 working days with the weekend added in. Although I usually work weekends. Um, never like these plastic showers. I call them plastic. Look at that two valve. We haven't seen that in 20 years. Um, I don't like them. No, I don't. Look at that. Wow. How do guys get away with building houses like that? I don't know. Um, so I'm happy to get rid of this. A lot of problems with that. A lot of problems with the outside. You know, people talk about silicone and how silicone is like some type of magic or something like that. But trust me, water always gets up under the silicone. Always, always, always. And when you have water getting up under the silicone, it still gets mold and mildew onto it. Um, so you're constantly pulling it off every couple of years or so and having to re caulk it. Um, so as a general rule, I'm not using silicone. If I, if I um, caulk a shower at all, it'll be latex caulking which is easier to apply, easier to take off, and rarely do I see mold and mildew behind it. It does happen, but especially clear silicone, it's gonna just bleed right through. 
Um, but yeah, happy to get rid of this. Relatively easy demo when I run into these plastic things. Um, this whole wall, this shower, and this tub should be out within, I don't know, hour, hour and a half. Um, a lot of people will say, oh, well, I'll do the demo. That'll save me money. Yes, it will on a tile shower and a tile floor and a tub deck and all that stuff. But on this, yeah, it won't save any money. This is, like I said, an hour and a half, two hours tops on a 14 day job. So it's kind of irrelevant. I just throw it out there. But yeah, I'm gonna get started on this. Uh, there'll be two new lights in here, which I think maybe you saw on the table. Um, I'm not gonna be doing the lights. He'll be doing those after the ceiling is gone. And then he'll, um, I think he'll be also doing, what else is he doing? Something else he's doing. He's proactive, you know, he's doing some stuff. Look at that. Look how off that is. Like, right there to there, probably bumps out. If I had a straight edge, I could show you better, but it just bumps out way too far. Um, builders are not the best in Georgia, that's for sure. And um, I think he did that window. See, it was this full scope window before non-functional. So then he got one of those smaller windows, which was a great, great idea, um, and put that in before I got here. But that's it. Enough talking. I'm going to get to work. Well, it's a couple, two or three hours later. I had to do a lot of setup. You know, I always put a drop cloth runner on the door. I take the door off, you know, take care of the dust a little bit because no bathrooms have functional windows, but it is all taken out. Um, what would it have been? Three hours? Well, three hours because I had to bring all my tools up and stage everything and put drop cloths down and cover the countertop and all that stuff. So once I got started, it was about an mm, hour and a half, maybe two hours. But three hours later, everything is gone. And I am ready to get started on the build back. And this is the final result of the couple of weeks that I've been here. This is um, much, much better than what it was with the bathtub here and the separate shower over here, which is now a shelving area, which um, my customer is gonna put some wood shelves in there later on. This is probably the third, maybe the fourth redo of a shower mm, tub combo that I've made a closet. I think the last one I did was maybe about two, two years ago. Yeah, it was about two years ago. And um, it's a great idea. You know, that shower was three foot by, I think about four foot deep, if that. And so it was a very small shower. Um, and now it's, you know, a very large six foot long shower with the shelving over here. And it could have actually been larger, you know, like the, I think this is a little better than 24 inches. It could have been 24 inches. But uh, regardless, it is finished and um, looking really nice. I took out the textured ceiling and put in sheetrock and I don't know, I guess I'm gonna paint that or something later on. So they decided to do the elongated vertical niche um, off to the side here uh, to kind of complement the window, you know, like, yeah. And uh, the shelving is gonna go in here afterward. There's this um, little curb top that I use um, I cut up a couple pieces, you know, put some epoxy in here, I think at this height, at the grout line, and then another one at this grout line. So there'll be a small one up here, larger one for shampoo, larger one for shampoo over there. And I did the plumbing um, so that it facilitates because I wasn't going to go through the wall. It's much easier to go through the attic and bring it down um, because this is R22000, Delta R22000, which has a diverter mechanism so it can divert to I think three yeah three different functions so that's number one number two and number three um, so yeah it's a diverter this is the mixer this is sorry this is a mixer this is a temperature control and then this is a diverter action so it turned out um, turned out very very nice. Um, the glass design. I think they had saw my previous video where my customer had wanted a waterfall glass design, and they decided they wanted the same thing. So that's a little bit uh, tedious to put in because all of that stuff has to be put in first before the field tile goes in. 
And the field tile is very nice. It's a 24, 12 by 24 nominal measurement, of course, um, porcelain, high gloss porcelain that is rectified. So it, it just facilitates a nice, easy, even leveling clips are still used, but you know, there's no lippage. So it turns out very nice. Um, and then the Schluter trim, by default I call it Schluter, but just the uh, aluminum trim that goes around everything, um, as well as the outside and the outside over here. Um, that's about it, this shaved rock tile. Um, looks very nice, and of course the grout. It's more more or less like a DeLorean gray, right? But when it gets wet, it's darker, and so that's what's going on there. Um, the nice $28 drain instead of a little cheesy $12 aluminum one that Home Depot also sells um, is always better. Then I do a little taper cut with those tile around the edge for for positive water flow to go down. Um, Slider bar with the wand, which is um, basically for the dog that they have. And that's why everything is kind of over there in the corner. And this is not screwed in all the way into the wall, but that is what they're gonna clip the leash on for the dog. And so I put in a two by six during the prep process to facilitate a good grip on that. Um, and that's about it, that's what's going on here. Um, I didn't do the lights. Uh, after I put the sheetrock in, my customer came in and put the lights in. So it is done a couple weeks later. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's what's going on here. It is finished complete and I am on to the next one. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're going to call me for advice, please donate $50 for 30 minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.